Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the tricks of working with After Effects. Okay, we're going to bring in an After Effects file, show you some of the tips and tricks of importing, and then how to work with it when it's on the timeline, specifically something called render and replace. And yeah, let's do that. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so working with After Effects files is pretty easy. Um, there are a few little tricks to make us better Premiere Pro After Effects users. Um, so I've got a file to bring in. So normally you do, you know, your project file, you go file import, and you'd bring in uh, logo reveal. Okay, so it's in your co-working folder. It's in After Effects project. Okay, it's called logo reveal. Bring that in. And this is it's not the bad way, but it's not the most optimal way. So what it's doing is it's looking at After Effects files and seeing if there's more than one composition. In After Effects, if you don't use it very much, a composition is what we in Premiere World call a sequence. So there's two sequences to pick from. Which one? I have no idea. And if you're like me and use After Effects a bit, you never name your comps. You should, <laughs> but you don't. So it's better to use, I canceled that by the way, is to use our media browser, okay, to explore After Effects files because it allows us to preview them before we bring them in. Otherwise we have to like import them, see what they are, import them, see what they are. Okay, whereas the media browser, okay, which is member window down to media browser. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to, I've got a shortcut set up for my exercise files already. If you don't, go to home directory and dig it out and right click it, set a uh, favorite for the exercise files. Okay, I've already done mine. So in here, um, you need to be, actually you don't need to be, you can be in list view or thumbnail view. Weird thing with After Effects files, even in thumbnail view, you don't get an instant preview. So exercise files, I'm on thumbnail view, I'm gonna go into co-working folder. And I'm gonna find the uh, AE, okay? So that's my After Effects file. There's no like little preview here in thumbnail, which I'm, I don't know, I think there should be. Um, but the problem is, is there's more than one comp in here, so it doesn't know which one to preview. So maybe that's it. So you can though, double click it to go in, and you can actually go inside the After Effects folder. It does take a little bit of time. Give it uh, the dynamic link server. Just briefly, the dynamic link server is just a way of connecting files dynamically from After Effects to Premiere. And it just means when you update After Effects files, they update instantly in Premiere Pro, which is really nice. But um, it actually opens up the After Effects file and says, do you want comp one or comp two? And you're like, these thumbnails aren't helping, but you can double click them, okay? And they're not imported yet, but you can preview them up here and kind of work your way through which one you want. In my case, I've got two kind of like logo stings, okay, for the beginning of our uh, little project here. Okay, I'm gonna open up the second one. So one's purple, and for some reason this morning, it doesn't always do this, um, if I double click either the first one, you see it says comp one, if I double click the second one, it still says comp one. Hmm, let me know in the comments whether yours is fixed or not. I'd be interested to know whether, yeah, mine's broken, everyone's broken. Um, um, the way to get around this is to close. So I hit the little uh, lines there, and then open the second one. Okay, and you can see this is the second one. Just a different colorway. It might be a completely different project, or a different composition that's inside After Effects, and you can work your way through them. Um, so we can bring it straight from the media browser. So that's not imported, right? Because we're using the media browser. We can import it by dragging it into the project or just drag it straight into the comp. Who remembers what I can hold down to kind of push all this along? You remember Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, and I'm gonna put it there and it just pushes it all along. Ripple insert is what I wanna say. <laughs> Whatever that is, pushing it all along thing. All right, my problem is I've still got my in and out points over here, so it's jumping out there. Let's clear the in and out points. And now let's talk about some of the things you can do. So obviously inserting um, After Effects is uh, pretty easy. Uh, Media Browser is a little bit extra handy. And um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set it to full. Mine's playing back okay. Okay, so often After Effects compositions won't, okay? I try to add some motion blur and stuff to it to make it stress the computer out, but it's actually doing just fine. So what we let's imagine that it's running really slowly. We know that we can render in and out. So I, O, hit enter on my keyboard, and we'll render this little chunk and work fine. The trouble with it though is if I end up moving it and using it somewhere else, you can see it's gone red. If I start adjusting it, it kind of, for something like this, because I've done it in After Effects, it's done. Like, I don't need this to not be done, <laughs> you know, like to change it anymore. Okay, I need it to be finished. It's something that I use on, say, loads of projects. It might be 
social media kind of like call outs or it might be say the end of your video some sort of kind of trailer or maybe it's like the YouTube what next kind of brackets and kind of um, you know what to view next and click on the channel and buy merch type of thing it's something you've made in After Effects and you don't need to redo it all the time okay or have it rendered every time so what you do is you do something called uh, so we don't need in and out okay and all we do is up here with it selected we go to our sequence and we've used render in and out just then Okay, this one here, it's called render, no, it's called render and replace. Where is it? It's not up there at all. <laughs> you right click it down here, okay, and say render and replace. So this is different from the other ones. The other ones were like temporary files, okay, created. And this one does a similar job, but kind of more like proxies. It's kind of somewhere in the between. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna render it and actually make a new video, but it's not making like a temporary proxy video. It's actually the finished version. So make sure that you are, on your, se uh, your sequence settings, okay, sequence settings, that this is all kind of how you want it to be when it exports, it's the right size, okay, uh, frame rate's perfect, because that's gonna use that uh, to create a replacement for this. And slightly different from proxies, it's actually the thing that's gonna go out, okay, it's like a replacement for it, never to be switched out again. Does that kind of make sense? Render and replace, just do it, Dan. Uh, pick a format, I'm gonna use QuickTime, this these presets will change depending on your sequence settings okay so find something that you want to work with my case you know uh something like this match source prores 422 it's going to be perfect okay or that one there because i know it's 25 frames per second and hd okay let's hit it's going to go it's going to create a new file next to my original one okay i'm going to you can include video effects so if we've added noise or something else to it it will smush them together okay I don't have anything else applied to it. Let's click OK. Now what happens is this file is actually not the After Effects file anymore. Okay, and can you see the red bar or the green bars are gone? Because it's actually just plain old MOV now sitting in my hard drive. Let's have a look. So this was the logo reveal, okay, that I had that I imported into After Effects. It's not using that anymore. It's using this new file with the great name comp2 logo reveal underscore blah 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 rendered dot MOV. Okay, so it's used that now and switched it out. So you could go through and delete this now. You don't want to, obviously, but you can. I'm trying to make a point here, I guess. So yeah, it's just using that file now. And you can copy it and paste it and make sure it goes onto the right track, okay, with your track targeting. Okay, but it's just a file you can use. Because yeah, let's say you're not gonna reuse it, you know, just use it as is, it doesn't need to be changed. If you do need to change it, Oh, other thing is that it's actually imported into your project as well. There it is there. Okay, it's a second MOV, not the After Effects file. So if you do later on though need to change it and you need to unpick that, you can right click it and say restore unrendered to go back to that kind of After Effects version of it. So notice that here's my MOV. There's the After Effects file that I've imported. Okay, if I hit restore unrendered, watch that project file. You see that actual file disappeared? Okay, so it went back, it's now using this, and it needs to be rendered again, it might run slowly, but you can make changes to it if you need to. Cool, so when you are using After Effects files, it's gonna stress your machine out pretty heavily, so just render and replace, you can go back afterwards. If you're doing lots of changes to your After Effects files, probably just use your normal render in effects in and out, okay, just to make it run fast, but if you're doing lots of changes, it's gonna have to update all the time. But there's lots of times where After Effects, you know, uh, the like and subscribe little thing that appears, you need that just to not be this crazy bit of animation that slows down your machine. It's the same every month or week or day, whatever your process is. A couple of things also to note when you are using that uh, render and replace, okay, is that uh, you, a few things won't be included in that render and replace, okay, that you can do afterwards. So in terms of, say, a fade in, okay, so I've got my opacity rubber band showing, Okay, so I've got opacity showing there, uh, command or control click, okay, to add a couple of points. So that won't be included, okay, if you rendered that in and out. So I un restore unrendered, and I go and render that now. That opacity is not like part of it, not baked in. It's something over the top of the original file. Same with, say, like an effect. So if I go to fix and I go transitions and I use dissolve and I go cross dissolve, insufficient media, that's okay. And um, this isn't baked into it as well. Like see this kind of like half and half. OK, 
Okay, other things that aren't baked in, any time remapping. So if I use the R key for rate stretch, okay, if I make that heaps faster, that's, and I go into and say render and replace, that's not like baked into it. It's an effect applied after. I can still render it, I render and replace, but it won't include that. Even if I include video effects, okay, it won't bake in opacity, it won't bake in transitions, and it won't bake in rate stretch. It will bake in if I go and add something like uh, noise. I'm not sure why I always go back to noise, but hey. Uh, noise and grain, if I add that now and start cranking it up, cranking it up, and then I go and say render and replace, and I tick that box on, that will be part of that original file. Let's have a look at it in our project file. So that one there is it, double click it. Can you see it's all part of it now? But the uh, opacity fade in isn't. All right, that is it. That is working with After Effects. Let's look at going the other way around. Let's stick stuff into After Effects from Premiere Pro.